And I am rolling. What's up, guys? So, uh, as you guys saw, it's a little bit of a bad influence and made Robert kind of play hooky a little bit today. So, <laughs> we're going to be cleaning these. And as per the competition, uh, go ahead and come get another shot of this, Walt. Can't help. Hold on. Uh, no, uh, 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 no, 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 so, make this, so let's, let's make this accurate. To make this about right, uh, no, not like so. <laughs> Robert's fish, or uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go, with, we'll give him an extra one. And Aaron's fish. <laughs> hey, I did catch three more while you were done. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, loser gets to scale the fish. Yep. But while he's doing that, I'm going to be getting potatoes started. I got my handy dandy cool little lay on set. I don't use it. I don't use it enough, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's nice to have. When I do use it. Do you have a pair of pliers in your truck? The first thing that we're gonna do with these panfish, there it's a combination of perch and uh, bluegill. Uh, what you and crappie. And crappie. Yep. Uh, everybody, a lot of them are the same thing, you know, just reasonably very yeah. different names depending on, on where you come name. from. Sunfish or brim. Right, you know, right, yeah. yep. Do this right here, make sure and get around all your, all the, what you call them, the fins. A lot of times, we were in a little creek today, uh, and a lot of times I like to fillet my bluegill. These are a little bit small, so we're just going to go ahead and fry them whole. So first thing to do, and reason I'll find these scissors, you can go ahead and cut off. Now, quick question here, uh, it is very reasonable as well, or personal preference. Do you do the fin chips? Do you eat them at the work side? Yeah, like the right. tails? Mm -hmm. Alright, well we'll leave the tails on. I generally like to cut the tails off. That's the best part. You know, I, I don't know. I, I just never got a taste for it. You, you'd think I would. As much as I fish, as much as I fish and everything. Uh, so, I'm gonna get started on potatoes. And Robert is just gonna do what I'm doing right here. And get all, well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be stuck. I'm gonna have puppy bones. <laughs> Robert's gonna have a snack. <laughs> I'll right. share. I'll share. Okay. Oh, well, good deal. Nah, it was it was like the draw. I, I I did cheat a little bit, even though there were no rules established, uh, and grabbed a hold of some worms. Well, not only the worms, but you were also sitting right on top of the honey hole. Yeah, I yeah. found the I found the hole. And every time I go to put a worm on or something, because I brought two spinning rods, and then he's like, oh, I'm you know. We're catching for dinner, so you use whatever is, yeah. is working. He went and got a spinning rod I brought, and he put worms on. But every time I would go to put a worm on, he'd sneak over my hole. Yeah, I'd be like, really? Really? Get out of my a, hole. That's how I caught my four fish, man. It was a good hole, too. Yeah, it was. Like, I like literally every single cast. Boom, every boom, single boom. cast. All right, so we got him that far, so he'll get them scaled. Yep. We'll get the water hose over here. If we get them scaled, we'll go over cleaning them. From that, I'm going to get started on the potatoes. You can throw clean ones in there. So we're gonna do, what kind of season do we get? Some kind of Cajun. We got some fish fry, New Orleans style, looks good to me. Fish fry breading is perfect. And so we're gonna do some Cajun style fish fry. We're gonna do some fried potatoes and fried onions and some garlic and uh, just like with the beer brats, man, everything tastes better outside, over a fire. Oh, uh, yeah, and, and no comparison. Damn. I forgot to tell you to get eggs. Oh, yeah. You know what? I might be able to help you out. Hold on just one second. Does it matter to you if they're still warm? Warm is good. Alright. Fresh eggs, right here. Uh, one thing we will need here in a second.
I'm sure someone will say something like, you just dropped the potato on the ground. Well, it's not cooked yet, and I'm pretty sure it just came out of the ground. Well, that's where it came from. I know. Like, oh my goodness, the food hit the ground. So how's your week been going so far, Robert? It's going all right. How's your week been going? Well, it's much better today. Is it? Yeah, much better week today. We got past Monday? Yeah, we got past Monday. Yesterday was Monday. Today was vacation day. We have a lot of fun today. Yeah, we do. But you know what? In my opinion, and we should. So you had a, I had a Monday Monday. Yeah. And a Monday Tuesday. You yeah. had a Monday Wednesday. Yeah. So that's three Mondays. Well, that's between two of us, that's four Mondays. So I think that for every Monday, you have, you should also get a Friday. Yes, absolutely. And so we are do a few Fridays. Yeah, that's right. You remember that week of Mondays we had? Oh my God. Wasn't it like 10 days? Yeah, it was, it was 10 days of Monday. That's been a, it's been, you know, a couple little hiccup. Nothing is like, nothing as bad as that. No. I think, uh, I mean, heck, we got our trailer. Yeah. And Walt, we were, we were, me and Robert, we alluded to it in some video you were here when we shot. We are saying probably the very worst thing that could happen is for me and Robert to get a trailer. Because there's been so much stuff that both of us, like, oh man, look at, how much you only want you two hundred dollars? Oh man, call around. I can't get a trailer. I can't do it. So, us having a trailer now at our disposal, mm -hmm. this 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 could spell some kind of disaster. Yes, <laughs> yes it could. But just have to be strong. Oh yeah, because when it comes to junk, me and you are the epitome of self-control. Right. Yeah. That's right. Well, you know, I still haven't forgot what I told you. If I wind up with another full-size Jeep, you're free to punch me in the face. So. And I'm worried that now that we have a trailer, that we're going to have to... Yeah. Yeah. This hurts. This hurts. Uh, that, it, hurts it will hurt me more than it will hurt you. You told me to do it. So. i tell you what we'll do, though. i tell you what, I'll be nice. They still make them. I saw them in the store the other day. Yeah. We'll go get some sock and bobbles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that way, it's not as bad. Because odds are, if you do buy the full-size Jeep, one either found it for you and, and showed it to you. You know what? Or I, after I told you that, you kept sending me pictures of one. I just remembered. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, we got our potatoes cut up. And while we get the fire made and get them ready, one thing I wanted to... That is really sharp. I'm not going to do that. This is kind of a key to fried potatoes, especially like home, home fries. I don't know, you're like, oh my God, you're going to kill yourself. No, this salt, it, it doesn't stay in there the whole time you cook. But for at least, it, it's better really to do it for like an hour or two. But for at least uh, 10 or 15 minutes while I get the fire started. It's called brining them. Same thing with the fish, honestly. Uh, you can do the same thing. Those being fresh creek caught uh, uh, brim and bluegill, they're going to be just fine. But if you uh, have like, say, catfish or, uh, as well, especially catfish, bass as well, some that taste a little bit fishier, you can soak it in salt water for a couple hours and it's going to do a great job of getting rid of the, the fish taste so you just put a bunch of salt and water while you get everything else ready let it soak we're going to do the same thing with these potatoes here let them soak in some salt water for a few minutes hey look we're using the trailer and the hunt camp giveth again with the sink. I 
one onion with those potatoes will probably be enough. Yeah. So I'm gonna use two. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Onions are kind of like garlic. The only bad thing that can happen is you don't use enough. Yeah. There's not really any such thing as too much onion or garlic. You ever, uh, you ever eat raw onion fried fish? Just have a little bit of raw onion on the side to fry the fish to I eat raw onion with about everything. Well, I figured we only need one to cut up. Yeah. And while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a way to start a campfire that's pretty foolproof. You know, if you're out in the woods, a flamethrower, you need to start a campfire. And, uh, you know, you might be having issues. <laughs> uh, I'm sure somebody thought I was about to show some really cool, really cool primitive way to start a fire. Yes, I can, but why would I when I've got my mat cat torch? We're just going to jump start this bad boy. Me and Robert started fishing at what, 8 o'clock this morning? And uh, it's getting a little later in the day, so there, there's no time to play around making a primitive fire. It, it's time to, time to get dinner moved. Alright, so I'm going to show Robert here, and he already knows, but I'm going to show him my way of cleaning a small fish when we're going to do a uh, fry the whole fish you know if you are lucky enough to have a big lake where you've got big old massive crappy you're, you're lucky but if you're down here just rivers and streams like these are most of these are actually pretty decent size so to clean one of these we've already scaled them you're going to find the vent right there now be careful make sure and use a nice sharp fillet knife but don't cut yourself uh I know people will be like, oh, you should use gloves. Well, nah, then you gotta throw away an expensive pair of Kevlar gloves every time you do it, because you cannot clean them. <clears throat> so, we're just gonna split it open. I like to split it open, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, take the knife and just kinda pop down a little bit right there on these, those two bones on the gill. Take his head. Some people like to cut the head off. I don't see any point. I'm just going to take the head, pull the head off. All right. Now all this stuff in here is stuff that you definitely don't want eating or in your oil. And this is one of the probably more important and more pain in the butt parts of cleaning a fish. Because that rib cage you've got right there, that's got the main artery for the fish. It's called the bloodline. And you can hear it hitting on those the knife hitting on those ribs. So I want to make sure and get all my insides out. Come in here and scrape all that bloodline out. Any of the bright red. And then when we rinse it, we'll double check it. Well, that's looking pretty good since we're going to be frying these whole. Put them on a plate and then we'll rinse them again really, really good with fresh water. And then we'll show y'all how to batter them and fry. Zatarans is my favorite. All right, so we're making our breading. Now directions say one thing they do, talk about using the egg. I use the egg, where's the water? Water is behind the sink, on the ground. I dig portion of the egg. We got quite a bit of fish here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use two eggs. The eggs really are what makes the the batter stick. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really kind of like the secret sauce, I guess you could say. But you've got to one of the one of the keys with the eggs is you've got to whip the crap out of them. You've got to get that. Um, Frost. Yeah, frost coming up. Just until you get your frost coming up.
Zatarans has always been one of my favorites. It's just a good Cajun, Cajun seasoning. Kind of a trusty go-to. And this going we have quite a few. I'm just going to put a little bit of these other. Make sure we have more than enough here. Do you need me for a moment? Here. I'll be right back. I forgot something very important. This is one of my secret ingredients that goes with the Zatarain. So I whipped the eggs a little bit. Any kind of beer recipe. Knock it off. I already gave you all of them. Because we are making French fried potatoes. Um, so here's our French fried potato recipe. I set my garlic cloves. We got onions, French fry. I've got about two, got probably, I'll probably do, I've got two cloves. I'll probably crush up another two or three. Put in there. Because, got it. Hot pickles. sauce and pickles. Yep. That's it. So now we're going to let that oil heat up for just a minute. I want to have Robert help me start yeah. breading the fish. All right, this is also one of the keys to making a good fish fillet that a lot of people people skip. I know we're going to be dipping it in to us uh, a mix where we went in the eggs, but you want to before you dip it to your eggs, you want to just pat pat it kind of dry. And, I, and granted, this is a little bit different than what you see a lot of people do. A lot of people will do multiple steps. I don't. I take and dip it into my egg mixture. But y'all see how whipped up I have it. This is actually one of my favorite parts of cooking fish is the breading. Maybe it's because it's that much closer to actually eating it, it than is. it is, you know. Yeah. It's like the final step. And I will come over here and... Everybody. so we're about to drop our fish now whatever you do uh, I've seen people say like oh you just use water to test you don't use a cup of water right you put just get your hands a little bit wet and if it does that and bubbles up the oil is hot enough so you only want your uh, oil around 350 no hotter than 375 350 360 is perfect all right if I don't trip and fall and die. Watch your step. Yeah, you got it. You got me. All right. And you're going to want, it's actually not really hard to tell when something's finished. What you want to do, one more other quick tip. 
don't put your fish or anything you're frying into the basket and then lower the basket in because it's going to take the breading off. So we're just going to drop these in. Also, don't overload your basket because yeah. you will pull your oil off. And one of the worst things that can happen is pulling your oil off. So as big as these are, I'm going to say four top probably. Yep. There we go. That worked out. Did it go in there? Uh, <laughs> I meant to do that, by the way. Okay. Uh, Robert's going to man the fryer. I'm going to grab some more paper towels. But you're going to know when this is done because it's going to float up to the top. Oh yeah, they all went into the pen. Why would they do that? Like when it's time. What? They all just went into went into the you know. You must have seen something over there that freaked them out. No, they were just looking up the road. They've never been that far back, and they were behind the truck, going in there, and it's new unexplored land, which is therefore scary, and they have to scream about it. Yeah, y'all take all this. Okay. There's all some heat in the top water. This, this is the part that stops when it's so close to being done. You still got just a little bit more of the Cooking, my boy, this walk gets to do dishes. Right, <laughs> I get the tartar sauce in just a moment. All right. Well. Shoot y'all's taste test. All right. For me, they have. I can't. I can't help. I've got to say. I, I've got to say it, Robert. I can't help it. It's kind of me. But it's a good thing we weren't waiting on you to catch the fish today. <laughs> Somebody wasn't hogging the honey hole. I could have caught some darn fish. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know what you had on your... Uh... Now that. Oh, yeah. That is. That's a hard day's... Yeah. Nice. Hard day's work. That's a day's delicious. Delicious. That is a great way to put it. Grab these two right here. I'll wait on you to grab your plate, so... More. I thought that was one stuck together. So you can tell also that's one way you can tell when your fish, a whole fish is getting done. It splits apart like that. Oh, hold on. See you right there. You know, you're, you're. All right, so here's another little side item that I personally enjoy with fried fish. Well, this is super simple. We're just gonna slice up an onion. Explain what's going on here. Well, the chickens and the guineas have sent two different attack forces. Um, they've sent these, they're just coming right at us. So while we're distracted by them, there's another group that's flanking us coming around over here. So. That, that was definitely planned. Yeah. The the, the turkey planned that because the guineas couldn't have come up with it. That's right. Because look who's coming up behind us. Oh, look. See you there? Yeah. See you there? And so the turkey plan, he's like, watch this. I'm going to send all these right. little at, and I'm going to come up from behind and get everything. Yeah. He had it. That's he was, hilarious. He was just, he, he was using them. That's not very nice there, Mr. Tom. Now that looks as close to perfect as anything I can think about. Mm-hmm. Sure enough does. And on that note, I think it's about time for Mr. Walt to get him some too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll try some. All right, so the way to uh, eat your fried fish is, well, first of all, you do have the fish chips right there. Yeah.
Why don't you just come in and... Luckily, bluegill ball. Doesn't really matter how you cook it. Any fish you catch like that day and you catch yourself and cook it the day you catch it is just delicious. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Why don't we have any hammocks up around here? Thank you. Never mind. Never mind. That's my hammock. Oh. Never mind. So Why don't we have two hammocks up right yeah. here? <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoy that. Just a uh, fun day to do a little bit of fishing and how to do a fish fry and mm -hmm. just uh, a day not working around the homestead or the yeah, farm. Yeah, that's right. This is a good day. Sometimes you need a day just not working. Right. And this was, this was a good day. Yeah. This was a good day. It was fun. And we got, oh, uh, it's too bad people aren't closer because we got a lot of fish and food left over. And unfortunately, the fish doesn't really heat back up that well. But... I hear some guineas and chickens that are gonna absolutely love it. Yeah, they will. They will too. We, um, yeah, for the as small as the fish were, they were very filling. There was a lot. I'm, I am stuffed, and we have a lot left. I was worried, even though we, I think we had ended up like twenty or something like that. Yeah, and you know, little, you know, five, six inch. I'm like, man, but that's not gonna be enough. But I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm stuffed. I think I might be able to eat one more just because of that good. Mm -hmm. so I shouldn't, but I think I'm going to. <laughs> so to follow up tomorrow on how Robert's feeling after eating that last fish. <laughs> right? Well, you know, those fish are so good, I couldn't stop at one either. So then it's They were good. Too. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, hope you enjoyed. Make sure and uh, share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Best Salmon Homestead. And watch your step. And we'll see you guys on the next video. See you next time. We weren't the same shirt. Almost, huh? Almost. How embarrassing. <laughs> I gotta go change now. <laughs> Twinsies! <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs>